Telltale and GameTap present... A uh, yellow screen and... Uh, Simon Max. Uh, I guess that's more orange. Okay, whatever. Hey everybody, welcome to me. Let's play for Simon Max 102, the sequel to Simon Max 101, which we played a couple days ago. So, uh, this is—I uh, really should have looked up how many episodes are in season one, so I can give like an accurate prediction of how we're doing this. But basically, what we're doing is uh, two Simon Maxes mixed in with a couple of Sunday videos. Then we'll do a full Let's Play. Then we'll rinse and repeat until we get through the game. So let us proceed to today's episode, Situation Comedy. Double Jeopardy Facts Droging and Butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You will never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Whoa. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you guess. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly, I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away, or at our earliest convenience. Great, I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Alright, we'll be taking care of that. Well, let's see what's on TV since we can go at our earliest convenience. Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer! We don't need non-dairy creamer. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep. It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer someday. That's more like it. You see? There's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a sloucher. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well-adjusted. Yeah, how nice of you. Anyway, inventory, we still have... Bosco's tear gas grenade. Does it still work? <laughs> Maybe that was fun. Yes, it does. All right, what's out the open window today? Hello, jerk. All right, whatever. Uh, apparently, there's something funny there. I don't get it though. So let's continue outside. And the graffiti is gone. That is very good. And th th Sam said. Go to the station at our earliest convenience, so we're going to take him up on that offer and do it at our earliest convenience by going to Bosco's Inconvenience. What ho, Samuel Maximilian? What the? You're probably wondering how I know your name. Not really. Psst. It's me, Bosco. Why the disguise? What's with the slanted suit strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom, the third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <laughs> English. <laughs> um... No, really. What made you convert to British? It's because everybody's got an in for me, that's why! Yeah, we heard. I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. Oh, they'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs. Alrighty, so... Who's got in for you this time? What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man! They're after me! Skin bodies? 
Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh no, <laughs> the skin bodies are like skinheads, but ten times worse. Sure, they're not a hundred times worse. <laughs> yeah, maybe a hundred times, maybe a million. Okay, what are they doing? These skin bodies. What exactly are they doing to you? They're stealing my, I mean, pinching my shaving cream. Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Alrighty. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from BTEG. Meaning nothing stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. Dash it all! I knew I forgot something! Alrighty. So, uh, we'd like to buy something. We want to buy something. Mm, yes, mm, uh, quite so, quite so. What do you got this time? What have you got? Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the Bloom skin bodies haven't got yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. Alrighty, uh, tell us what's behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecule. Very useful, very useful. We want it, but of course... We'd like that voice We have no money. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see. Uh, 30 shillings would be about 1 million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Worth every shilling, trust me, trust me. Alrighty, fine. Uh, do you have anything that helpful? Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? No. Fine, how about the shaving cream? We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Then, fifty. Ticker Tipu. Just bring it to the conca. Alrighty, we will do that. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. Uh, goodbye. Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip, honey nut cherry. Alrighty, so we'll take the shaving cream. I could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Oh, no. hey, dog. Hey, dog. The skin bodies rule the street. The little bladder did it again. After him, I mean. Ah, uh, we're going for after him. We're tally hoeing. We're tally hoeing. Out the door we go. Now this part's a little tricky. Uh, do I have to watch the car or is it gonna jump us in? I forget. Oh well. Looks like we're going to have to go get in the car and go after him. Even though they're just going back and forth right now. After those little munchkins. Yeah, 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 Come on, load faster, please. There they are. Let's get them. Don't do those laughable small wheels move so fast. You'll never catch us. The skin body can't be done. Oh no! You say that was a very bad voice crack. Alrighty. I thought you'd never ask. What you want to do is you want to try and shoot them to where they run into a sign or something in the middle of the road. For example. Whoops. Like, this might be easier actually, because now I can be like this and not have to worry about aiming issues. The skin there you go. Hey, the shaving cream. There we okay. go. Hold on tight, little buddy. Oh, mommy.
Well, we got the <laughs> shaming cream back. That was easy. Uh, I forget. Do I have to go give back to Busco or what? Oh well, let's just see if we can give back to Busco. Even if we can't, it'll drum up time, and time is money. Hello. Oh, it's you, love. All right, here we go. Shaving cream. Hey, Bosco. We've retrieved your precious shaving cream. Jolly good, show, Jolly good. Now, if you're wondering about the reward money, yes, we do accept personal checks and all major credit cards. No. As a reward for retrieving the can of shaving cream, I hereby grant you a can of shaving cream. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Alrighty, so, well, that was pointless. <laughs> okay, so. Into the bathroom just because we can. Alright, fine. We won't go in there. I didn't want to go in there anyway. Um. Excuse me. Uh, no, no, no! Let's do some shopping. Great! Well, let's go see Sybil because we still don't have to go to the TV studio until our earliest convenience. So. Why not waste some more time and listen to the fact that uh, my cell phone is just sending a text I sent several minutes ago. Wow. He got bumped over there. That's amazing. Into Sybils! Alrighty, here we go. Hello, Sybil. What's all this? Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Yeah. Uh, what? What? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. Okay, so you're a publisher? So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Alrighty. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. If you say so. How about a quick analysis, for old times' sake? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. One, two, three and a half. Three and a half. You're harboring feelings of guilt over previous feelings of remorse. That's so true. Okay. Uh, journalism's a fine career. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it. It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like, what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No! What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. Whatever. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. He Elvis did. was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. Okay. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Who else? Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Well, that's not gonna help. Also, we get we'll more fun back. stuff. But that Keep was just watching the supplies. Pointless yeses. Alrighty, fine. Our earliest convenience has arrived. Let's go to the TV studio. And she still has that unrelaxing relax side. So be it. To the Desoto. If Sam will walk, he walks really weird. Where are we going, Sam? Anywhere but here. The TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. 
the TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. WARP. Television's so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. Indeed he does. Alright, there's a director's chair right here. It's got a falling star on it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder how you'll crash and burn. Uh, yeah. Such a delightful song. Hello, person! Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! Could a fool? Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next! Who's next? No one's next. Uh, we're looking for Myra. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of- Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative, and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? Why don't you like Myra? You and Myra. Why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less? If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. I will agree with him. Alrighty, what are you doing here? What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours! Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. Meanwhile, there's a lady in the hall. It's so noisy out there. We'd like to audition! We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Yeller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me. And Sam, you play the dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, Sam, ready. I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? What's my motivation? You're a bad dog. Now, show me, rabbit. Um, grrr. No, dig deep. You should be just frothing mad. Hmm. Easy peasy opportunity easy use the shaving cream. Diseased. Thank you, thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people. Who... Zip it. Okay, Max, you just realized your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're grief stricken. Now, emotion. Uh, boo hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show uh. more emotion, and she ought to be declared a national Botox reserve. Grief, I said. Give me grief. Uh. Fortunately, Bosco helped us out with that by giving us this lovely tear gas grenade launcher. Use it on Max. <laughs> Perfect. Now, 
The fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Oh. Idiot. What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my head. Or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bravo. Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! Head to the second floor and building immediately. Let's hurry, Sam! We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left! Uh, depending on the time, you might have less, so... I'm gonna ignore the fact that there is a concept of time, Sam. I mean, Max, stop it. I don't want to see that. If we do it again, I'm moving. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna ignore the concept of time and say that we've gone long enough, so next time on Sam and Max, we shall begin our trek of fame by going through that door. It's right over here. See you guys then.